We're going to be talking about ankle range of motion now, and there's a couple that you guys need to know and understand, and, and hopefully a lot of you already kind of know them. The two most basic motions that everybody should know are dorsiflexion, which is pulling your foot all the way up. So the dorsal aspect of your foot should be moving and it's coming up towards the sky. And then plantar flexion is like hitting the gas pedal. So you're pushing your foot down, down, down as far as you can. When we talk about ranges of motion, plantar flexion, you have way greater plantar flexion than you have dorsiflexion. And when we talk about neutral, so if, again, the talus is this bone that's just this, this, the inferior part or the inferior bone of the talocrural joint. So the joint that sits between your tibia, your fibula, and your talus. Taylor neutral, to find that, what you would do is put the person in just a little bit of plantar flexion. So have them relax. And then you would find the two corners, the front corners of your talus and then rock them side to side until they feel in the neutral position. And it shouldn't be really like way down because if you put them way in plantar flexion, the talus is gonna slide way anteriorly. And if you put them way into dorsiflexion, the talus is gonna slide posteriorly. So you need to be in the open packed position to be able to find this. And that's how you're gonna find Taylor neutral. So when you're going to start measuring things using your goniometer, this is a position that you're going to need to start in and then moving from there. So notice we are in a little bit of plantar flexion already to begin with, because if we're starting all the way up, some people really like their dorsiflexion is neutral. So it is when they're standing, that's about as much dorsiflexion as they can get, especially people that have had ankle injuries. So when we talk about chronic ankle injuries or instability, so CAI, that's something that really causes problems or if they've had uh, osteochondral lesion from their tailored dome, they're gonna have issues with that, or just repeated ankle injuries or dislocations. So dorsiflexion is coming up, plantar flexion is pushing down, and then from there we have a couple positions that not everybody always talks about, but I think you should know. So we've talked about adduction and abduction. Adduction is adding to the middle and abduction is moving away from the middle. So if you adduct, it's just straight rotation in and abduction is straight rotation out. There shouldn't be any you know, rotating of the forefoot going into uh, pronation or supination as you're doing these. Just think about if your knee is neutral like mine is and you're moving your foot flat against the floor, those are A, B, and A deduction as we do those. So then the next two that we have are called pronation and supination. And in the upper extremity, we talk about what's going on up here, right? So supination, you can hold a bowl of soup and not spill it. And pronation is when you pour the soup out. In the feet, you, you don't really talk about soup when you talk about the feet, uh, but it's kind of the same general idea. So what you would see is for pronation, what we're going to do is we're going to walk on the very medial part of our foot. And so people that have a lot of genu valgum are going to be more likely to have flat feet and to walk on this part of their foot. And then supinators, uh, people that have the genu varum, so the bow-legged are far more commonly found to have uh, supination in their gait so they're going to be walking on the sides of their feet and we'll talk to about pes cavus and pes planus later when we get to the foot but these people are going to be walking here and so these are a lot of people talk about these as uh, inversion and eversion but that's not true inversion and eversion that's pronation and supination and again when we're talking about those we're talking about them from a neutral, so a tailor neutral position when we're going into those positions. And then the last two motions that we see at the ankle are your inversion and eversion. And these are really mixes of what's going on. So when we're going to invert our foot, we're talking about truly rotating in. And when we talk about inversion, like our most common mechanism for ankle sprains is inversion and plantar flexion. So inversion, when some people talk about it, it is like straight, just coming straight to the inside. And then when we add the plantar flexion in it, so when we come in here, this is what we're really doing. We're coming down and in to get into this plantar flexed inverted position all the way down. And then eversion is coming straight out. So really rocking that hind heel. And when we talk about our 
our lateral, so our high ankle sprain, so hurting these outside guys, so our tibiofibular ligaments, we're going into this dorsiflexed, abducted uh, position in eversion where we're really rocking out. And so we're really stressing. These bones are supposed to be next to each other and we're starting to really pull them apart and put tension on them, which can then, as we talked about before with the syndesmosis and interosseous membrane, cause lots of issues. And I've seen people tear it all the way to the very top. By the way, if that happens, you are going to surgery because that is an extremely unstable joint and the chances of that healing on its own are slim to none. Um, and then just really quickly, and these aren't motions that your patient can try to do, but your tibia and your fibula do spread out. So the, those um, ligaments do get put on tension when you're walking, but they can also go uh, and have anterior posterior translation and we can do these as clinicians by putting our fingers on the fibular head and going anterior posterior and then same on the distal aspect of it and it's sensitive uh, area so you need to kind of be careful and let them know that you're doing it but these aren't physiologic motions like what we just talked about these are accessory motions and hopefully everybody remembers the difference between physiologic motion and accessory motion Physiologic is voluntary and you're making it happen. An accessory motion is involuntary motions that are necessary to have full physiologic motion.